seconds remaining. What's up, guys, and welcome back to the SA qualifiers here for GESC Thailand. We have game two between Mad Kings and Infamous. Of course, game one, as you can see, was won by Infamous, and it wasn't uh, a perfect start, but get a little bit of advantage in those lanes. Get those big items. The Blink Daggers, the BKBs. I guess for them it was the Santinyashas as well, but uh, at that point, uh, their execution seems like it was just a little bit of a step above Mad Kings. That's not to say that Mad Kings cannot perform to the degree uh, necessary to beat Infamous. They are, I mean, absolutely fantastic players. And like Benjez and Leo style have been all over the world playing. But uh, off of last performance, it's going to need a little bit of a, of a easier time in the lanes. I think that's really what it comes down to. The top lane was contested so heavily as Kataro's Tiny just absolutely smashed Ben Jez's Gyrocopter. Mid lane was won by Pizza. Bottom lane was won by Stinger. It was just all straight wins across the board. And wow, look at this. Well, it's Aking's going to be banned out, so it's not going to be the exact same scenario. But uh, it takes some balls to let through Tiny and then pick up a Gyrocopter and then have the exact same lane setup that you just beat your opponents with except the other way around. So, I mean, there's a chance that the Mad Kings might not put this Tiny up against that Gyrocopter, but we saw what the impact of it was last game. Tiny, unless there is overwhelming support in favor of Gyrocopter, tends to destroy Gyrocopter. That's just how it works. You have, like, twice his base damage, and that seems pretty easy to win in the lane when you have, pretty, uh, when you have that much base damage in advantage. So Infamous have some balls going for this pick right off the bat. Uh, how do they actually make it work this time? Pick up support heroes that are a little bit more fighty. Bane's certainly a good start along with that Gyrocopter, so it's uh, not going to be like, oh yeah, they got that lane easy peasy. No, it's a little bit of a start here for the Infamous side, but uh, they will probably need a third hero there. Or, you know, try to mix up the lanes. Pressure elsewhere so that the Tiny isn't going to have his buddies with him. And, you know, just picking up powerful cores, self-sustaining laners. That's how you would do that. That's how Infamous would go about doing that. But uh, it is going to be a little bit difficult. Remaining. Mad Kings, with that Tiny, will pick up the Keeper of the Light. So they'll have a, a potential dual lane here. Tiny and Coddle, very, very deadly together. Uh, the Avalanche Toss usually is going to allow you to set up for, let's say, half of an Illuminate at absolute worst. Uh, if you are going to get you know, even perfecter, Perfecter. I just said perfecter. God damn, I'm retarded. If you're going to have even better execution, then you can probably set up a full avalanche toss, full illuminate combo, and how with stuff like toss being amplified by chakra magic and that cooldown reduction, it's not huge or anything like that in the early stages, but it does add up. You can pr apply so much significant pressure in towards that gyrocopter. Of course, the downside is that you have a coddle in the lane, and coddle's always paper. If he gets caught by a Nightmare or, you know, any stun from Infamous, which currently they don't really have, but, you know, any stun they pick up in the future, then he'll just fold. And then Tiny by himself, you know, may be able to fight his way out of it. He is very tanky, but, uh, you know, without that additional hero, usually can't stay in the lane and actively harass and push back the Infamous heroes. Uh, so that's, like, how Infamous would go about dealing with this. However, I do think that uh, Tiny overall is a better hero than the Gyrocopter in Dota period, let alone in lane in a heads-up matchup. So Mad King's definitely coming out of these first two picks with a nice little advantage here. How do Infamous force the issue? Again, a way to do this is you put a third hero into that lane and kind of overwhelm the Mad King squad with power. Alternatively, you put strong heroes in the other lanes and say, okay, you can put two heroes... Uh, you can put your Tiny and Coddle in that off lane. We're going to destroy you in our off lane, and we're going to destroy you in our mid lane, and then kind of force these extra heroes from Mad Kings to rotate out. Hero like Quap, it would have been a nice little mid hero to get that done. Pita, well, I mean, he plays Shadow Fiend like all the time, so maybe they're just going to go for the SF again, or go for a DK. That's kind of a, a little bit of a slower method here for the Infamous side. Uh, we have seen DKs do very, very well almost universally. Uh, against any hero, period. We've seen DK do so well that he's been th being thrown towards the off lane. Not really sure if that's where this DK is going to land, but uh, you know, putting a DK in mid, putting a DK in the off lane, usually those situations, uh, for a mid DK at least, you don't really need much help for a mid DK. And for an off lane DK, you could use help, 
but you don't really need it because your job is just to get levels and to not die. So uh, it's going to be infamous. Looks like taking that route of uh, apply a lot of power to the lane, the tiny coddle lane. And try to help just self-sufficient heroes that aren't going to be bothered. And honestly, Mad Kings with a coddle and disruptor cannot easily kill off a DK. Uh, these heroes, I mean, they can do a lot of damage, very situationally though. Uh, and up against a DK, like right clicks are going to be irrelevant from a disruptor and coddle. So, uh, Mad King's setting up for a lot of spell casting, a lot of combos. Uh, it is going to be once again a game where Infamous, if they just get their BKBs, then you know Coddle and Disruptor don't do anything from there on out. It'd be a pretty good item. Turns out BKBs are good guys. You know that? Dropping some serious knowledge bombs here on the on the B BTS channels. I think we're also uh, streaming this on Facebook and YouTube as well. But uh, that's that's out of my domain, man. That's that's not that's I'm not doing that. I I am like doing that. What up, you guys in Facebook and YouTube land? But I'm not actually, like, paying attention to you guys. I'm sorry. Because I'm a terrible person, apparently. Infamous. Ooh, new hero pod champ, Shaker. Shaker's the pick for Infamous. Huh. Well, whenever we see a hero like this, it's a little bit new. A little fallen out of favor. We've got to look at where he's going. We've got to look at the advantages. We've got to look at the disadvantages. I currently don't exactly know where he's going. Could be the offlane shaker. Could be a support shaker. The advantages are going to be that long range stun. I mentioned that stun when taking out Keeper of the Light. Earth Shaker, not your most traditional stunning hero. But you know what? Does get the job done. Does it land the fissure, wall up the coddle, let the Bane and Gyrocopter close in. That's all you need. Uh, also being able to combo break the Tiny and the Disruptor, putting up walls, really useful up against the Tiny and up against this Lifestealer now that he's picked up. So, you know, Fissure is going to be an absolute nightmare for them to worry about. That's the advantages of the Earthshaker. The downside is that he's going to be a, a very combo-based hero himself, going up against now a hero that is magic immune in the Lifestealer, a hero that has status resistance in the Tiny, and a hero that has a gigantic AoE silence in the Disruptor. So... Good luck, Earthshaker. You know, you, you can you can try to find success there, but you absolutely need to have the element of surprise. And that, of course, involves a Blink Dagger, which Earthshakers typically struggle to pick up if their lanes aren't going to be clean. And I don't know how good these lanes are going to be for Earthshaker, but it doesn't look good. Up against a Lifestealer, that seems a little bit tough. Up against a Tiny, that seems even tougher. As a support, you just don't get gold, which kind of sucks. But uh, yeah, it definitely is a hero that has a little bit of potential here for Infamous if the Fissure walls are in place. It's really not as much, uh, at least early game for the Earthshaker, about landing remaining. your spells as much as it is about walling the enemies and just landing those walls. So uh, yeah, Infamous just have to channel, uh, channel the President of the United States, go full wall, keep the Lifestealer and Tiny out. Easy game, easy life. For the Earth Shaker, Tinker will be taken out here, and uh, we'll see what Mad Kings think about this Shaker and where he's gonna go. Shaker Bane, like way back when, used to be a, a, a combo, but not really uh, super common. You have a lot of kind of disables, but they're not really elegant disables. I would still be looking for an off lane selection if I if I was Mad Kings, I would assume the Shaker's gonna be played as support and uh, be paying attention to some off lane action. I'll take out the Viper. Maybe expecting the DK to be going mid. I mean, or Shaker, DK. Hell, even Gyrocopter, we could see him go towards the offlane, try to dodge that tiny matchup. Uh, I mean, Infamous are working with a lot of lane flexibility right now. Earthshaker is always a good hero. Always has been, always will be. That is false. That is just false. He is, I mean, currently he's not a terrible hero, but he has definitely been amazing, and he has definitely been unpicked. So, uh, yeah. You don't want to fall into those traps, guys. That's not how you should be thinking about Dota. What do Mad Kings want? They are looking for their mid lane. There are an absolute truck ton of stuns from the infamous side. So going for these super mobile heroes, probably not going to be all that desirable. They can go for someone like a Puck, get that lifesteal and access route in. As a hero that is you know, going to do just fine in those lanes without having to worry about just getting uh, absolutely obliterated from an opening stun like a Storm Spirit would. But go for an OD instead. Lifestealer... Definitely has had a, a little bit of a decreased reliance on uh, on vehicles nowadays. We very infrequently see life stealers 
you know, and then Storm Spirits. Like, that, that's the combo, right? Uh, not really picked up all that often, but picking up an OD makes these lanes a little bit tough here for Infamous. Earthshaker, stuns, walls, control, it's all great. As far as actually killing off an OD, he doesn't really do it. DK as well, like, you can chip out an OD, you can make his life a little bit tough, but he doesn't really actually kill him. But now we have a hero that will eventually kill off an OD. You have a Phantom Lancer pickup. And Infamous, okay, it is going to be a support shaker. It's going to be Stinger's DK. Interesting. Pizza and the, with the gyrocopter. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not really sure what these lanes are actually going to look like. Is it really going to be a gyro bane dual lane? I mean, dodging that tiny matchup seems to be like priority number one for Infamous because that is not good as we've already seen. Uh, is it better to go up against an OD? I guess it's not quite as bad, but it's not great. I don't know. This this Tiny's lane seems so free. Like, there's no lane here that uh, Infamous can put together up against that Tiny where it's like, yeah, we got the Tiny. He's not a problem anymore. So, yeah, the Tiny seems like a free lane. Life Stealer seems like a lane where he's not going to be pressured at all. Like, maybe he's going to get into a little bit of a fight. And if those fights aren't executed perfectly for Mad Kings, then, yeah, he might go down. But it's been just Life Stealer, so I would assume that he's going to be perfectly capable of surviving in those situations. Overall, these lanes are looking uh, a little bit a little more advantageous core-wise from the Mad King side. Of course, the X factor here is, what is the Shaker going to get done? What is this Bane going to get done? These two heroes in Shaker and Bane are a little bit more... What is this sword? This sword looks like Garbo. It, this doesn't look like it belongs in Dota. Does anyone, anyone agree with me? This does not... This is a sword that just belongs in a different game. Also, this is not how you hold a shield. What is this, DK? Except, come on, Ice Frog or Gaben, please. Uh, but Disruptor and Coddle, they don't really make rotations. They're all about babysitting your lanes, babysitting your cores. And of course, those cores are pretty well situated, so they don't really need to be doing all that much. But an Earthshaker and a Bane... They're kind of designed to move around, and a Bane can sit around and babysit, but Earthshaker definitely will not want to. We can see boost. Boots first on him, double clarity. He wants to move around, he wants to aid in these other lanes. But I'm not really sure if he can offer enough impact. Like, who is he actually going to gank in a lane? Let's not include the sports. What cores are he, is he actually going to look for? Are you going to kill off an OD with a Gyrocopter Earthshaker? If you get a full wall off, like an absolutely full wall off, then yeah, you have a chance. Otherwise, it's probably just not going to happen. Can you ever kill off a life stealer? No, he's got range. Like, that'll never happen, ever. Can you kill off a tiny? You might be able to if, you again, you get a full wall off. But there's a much higher chance that in trying to go for tiny, you get yourself killed in the process. So, overall, this shaker doesn't seem like he has many opportunities. He's going to stick up towards his top lane for right now. Give Kataro a couple of walls off. And get this Phantom Lancer's lane, uh, the off lane Phantom Lancer's lane, a little bit cleaner. And eh, Fissure's still still kind of uh, abusable there. And, wow. Okay, interesting. Well, I mean, not the lane interesting, but the fact that they use the Luminate super early on. I mean, with a Tiny, you do kind of inevitably push this wave, but <laughs> I don't think Stinger expected that. He's going to get a lot of experience from this lane, but he also got his ass kicked there. Forced to pick up Dragon Blood at level 1 just to get a little bit of extra regen and sustain, but uh, this is going to be a lot of creeps just thrown into this grinder in the bottom lane and DK. Uh, I'm not really sure what build he's going to go for. May feel inclined to get a little bit extra Dragon Blood early on, but is still going to be uh, getting a hell of a lot of experience. And they are just shoving this lane. I mean, Tiny can push towers once he gets to, like, level 6, level 7, but uh, you don't really want to push this early. Very, very few heroes actually want to do that. So uh, they may be costing themselves a little bit in this lane by... A little bit too aggressively blowing up this creep wave because Stinger is having so much experience. Over in the mid lane, Gyrocopter is, uh, well, gonna have this combo. Not really huge or anything like that since you could just self imprison, but now Schofield's in place. Tight wall? Looks tight enough. Uh, he doesn't land the stun, unfortunately. Rocket Barrage, how good is it? With a couple more punches, Leo style is gonna go down. And also, Disruptor takes a lot of damage on the retreat there as well. That wasn't perfect, it wasn't clean, but it is gonna be a kill. Is the OD. I mean, he is going to be uh, very good in these 1v1 matchups, but throw a 3v2 his way, and a level 2 OD is, is very unhappy. He really doesn't... I mean, Essence Orange just isn't an ability. He doesn't do anything. And Astral, if you are forced to Astral yourself, 
Doesn't really do all that much either. Dude, the mantle ta taunts. Leo Styles, Leo Styles feeling himself right now, despite just getting absolutely wrecked in the mid lane. He's feeling himself. Over towards top, I would expect Katara to be going for the kind of new Vo Phantom Rush level up build. Because Lance is pretty trash up against the Life Stealer. But, uh, you know, trading hits with Life Stealer is never really advised. Unless you do get a lot of Phantom Rush and a lot of agility. At a certain point, I think the this lane kind of tips into the Phantom Lancer's advantage. But not by a huge degree. And by that point, the Life Stealer should be looking at, you know, armlet components at least. So he should be able to sustain through that. That's your favorite cosmetic? Well, I'm sorry to say you have terrible taste. I hate to be the one to break it to you. I'm just kidding, guys. I'm just kidding. It's almost as like like cosmetics and opinions on cosmetics are subjective. Wow. Look at that Phantom Rush. Did you see that? Do you How much agility? 14 agility. That didn't seem like 14 agility. That seemed like 30 agility because holy crap, that Phantom Rush did some damage. Uh, life Stealer isn't going to get a lot of help here. Uh, if you put a Disruptor on this top lane, he doesn't really help out the Life Stealer. Same thing for the Coddle. You kind of need him to, uh, I guess, do what he can to help out this Tiny. But overall, 12-1, 13-1, this DK, level 4 is getting a lot out of this. Out of this. Well, we'll, we'll call it a hard lane for right now because that's essentially what it is or what, what the safe lanes come down to. Uh, I'm not really sure if these lanes are going to be working out for Mad Kings in the way they would really want. They do get the Ward denied. That'll show them. But uh, these standing lanes, they're not losing terribly, but they're not really gaining enough of an advantage based on the fact that their cores are just that unkillable. This is a little bit problematic for them because it's one of those situations where it's like, okay, the lanes are going exceedingly mediocre and our supports don't do anything. So what the hell do you do afterwards? Like, how do you get yourself back in a situation where you can be assertive? You gotta wait for your cores to get farmed. You just have to sit there and again, just take it. They can rotate around onto Excel, get a little bit too far ahead of himself, he is going to get into the trees, has another brain sap if you can live, but one more shot should kill him off, and yeah, it will do just that. Excel going to get picked off here. The ganking Coddle, always got to be scared of it, over in the mid lane, Leo style. Takes a fissure, takes a full rocket barrage, it's level 2. Oh, fairy fire, not needed just yet, Gyrocopter will survive. But again, killing off an OD is pretty tough. Uh, his bulk is actually uh, not irrelevant. How much does he have with these nulls? Show it to me. 840? Not a bad amount of HP. And the only level 2 Rocket Barrage for right now. Because it has been like a 3v2 party in the mid lane. Is going to be uh, just, just a little bit short. Level 3, level 4 Rocket Barrage. And yeah, now you got a stew going. But obviously that's going to be taking a little while longer. They're looking for the Life Stealer right now. Benjez does have 3 points in Feast trying to get that passive laning advantage over that Phantom Lancer, but of course that means that he is very easy to kill off. Speaking of easy to kill off, Pita's dead. Ripper, oh, miss at the high ground? Okay, now he's dead. You don't get that much favor from Ice Frog. That's not how this game works. Mad Kings, they are working with a, uh, they're starting to get the, the creeps back into their advantage. But they are going to have to worry about this. Fissure coming in, does land onto the that did not look like it was close enough to land what the hell that was weird they're going to infest that damage onto the phantom lancer though he needs some sustain like life Stealer obviously has all the sustain in the world because he literally steals life that's kind of in the job description uh pl he's gonna go for a ring that's that's a good item on pl but i mean he's not really gonna be able to sit there and take prolonged engagements up against a life stealer he just doesn't have the health or life steal or anything like that to, to actually get that accomplished so he's just gonna book it that's a good idea i like it the dk up towards the top lane now and yeah feast is usually pretty good against strength heroes but feast is physical and of course physical is blocked by armor which dk has in spades should still be a uh, situation where both these heroes can get farm but it's just slightly less punishing for the infamous side Mad Kings just waiting for those first couple of big items. I would imagine a Blink Dagger on Tiny is going to be uh, part of his build in this game. Uh, for the Life Stealer, he's going to go... I don't really know what he's going to go for, actually. We've seen Armlet kind of been phased out. Radiance being probably the most common item nowadays, but ooh, even these neutrals going to get into the action. The Lance is out, and the Doppelgang down to low ground. Katara with the Phantom Rush damage just skewers that Disruptor, gets the kill. Dude, Phantom Rush. It's a real ability. 
Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what he's going to go for. I've even seen Battle Theory on, on Life Stealer. Obviously, right now, he's got other plans, but uh, Radiance, Battle Theory, those items do take a long time to actually farm up. So Mad King's got to keep this status quo right now, try to limit their losses, maximize their gold, and then, you know, just kind of wait for their items. Infamous, they're getting a, a little bit of a nice base to build off of right now, but I'm not really sure if they'll have a point where they are suddenly like, okay, let's go kill things. Because DK, I mean, he could push down the towers, in theory, if he didn't use his dragon form just to try to hold the lane down. Pita is very powerful if he's not dying in the mid lane. So I think this lane situation has kind of shifted a little bit in favor of Mad Kings. They are now working with a, a standing lane advantage, and with the uh, just ability to just sit back and do whatever the hell they want. Their items are going to be coming up, I would assume, a little bit earlier than the relevant items on the infamous side. If, if ever there's a, a game for Lysler to go for Armlet, then I think it's this one. The Radiance is still really, really good up against PL, uh, Gyro, and DK. I mean, they all get kind of wrecked by Radiance. So if he does want to go for it, man, more power to you. But if you get an armlet and a blink dagger on the tiny, you can just put the pedal to the metal and start just absolutely shredding everyone. Speaking of shredding everyone, Pita is going to turn this one around. Call down does land once at the Leo style. Schofield hasting himself in to nothing. So he's going to haste himself right back out. I guess that was more of a counter attempt than a uh, real kill attempt there. Once again, we find Kataro up on this top lane. Is, it looks like the disruptor is going to get jacked up. Does get denied by the Prowlers. The Prowlers, of course, are the worst thing in Dota right now, so they're going to be giving and taking away as they see fit. And it will be a group up over in the mid lane. DK, once again, with an Elder Dragon form, going to start chipping out this mid tower with that poison. But in the meantime, Moger is chipping out this bottom tower with a whole bunch of rocks, and he's going to do it a little more effectively. Skullfield's going to arrive and really needs this experience. Level 3 on the Earthshaker so far hasn't really done all that much. As the Tiny going to teleport out Moger. Looking for someone to toss back, but you know, chasing after the Dragon Knight. Decides to avalanche that one melee creep just in his rage. Yeah, that was uh, <laughs> an interesting move. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. A very, very passive early game from both sides. Just looking for those couple of items. Drums in the OD, did he actually get that? He did. No, wait, that? No, he didn't. That's that's Mogers. If he just didn't get anything, he's going to go for a four staff. Okay. I mean, he's going to get that anyway. <laughs> get it first, get it second. Does it really matter? Probably not that much considering this pace of the game. Item sequencing when you are playing a very passive game just doesn't really matter. Uh, if this game had like 50 kills, then it's like, dude, why are you getting four staff? You need the stats from the drums. But obviously we're not in that game state right now. Shaker just trying to get that experience together. Going to be a much slower Blink Dagger on him. Shaker uh, just naturally doesn't farm as aggressively as a Sand King because he doesn't have Burrow Strike or Sandstorm to get himself out of dangerous situations. So if you're going to go into a Creeper to farm as an Earth Shaker, you're fully committed. Like, you got to go in, and if you get jacked up, you, you die. I mean, that's just something that happens. This is Earth Shaker farming in a nutshell right here. This is how Earth Shaker farms. I was a big fan of Earthshaker offlane back when that was kind of more meta. Earthshaker support though, it seems like so, so finicky, especially up against these tanky cores. Earthshaker does a lot of control, he doesn't really do a lot of damage. Uh, the Phantom Lancer does a lot of damage though, he's gonna go for the battle theory, he's phantom rushing the hell out of this creep wave of top lane. Mogers TP up towards top, will try to mount some sort of defense here. Stingers, eh, not gonna take all that much damage from that though. And, they will retreat on the south end. Benjes is going to open the wounds of Stinger right now. Right clicks from the Life Stealer starting to add up as Mogur is going to close in. Has another toss right now, but is going to get Dragon Tailed, so he can't quite get it out. Benjes doesn't have enough to continue this chase right now. You don't want to really cast anything on the Phantom Lancer. Oh, that damage was enough to kill off Stinger? Okay, the toss was enough. They will kill off the Disruptor over in the mid lane in the meantime, but man, that is a great trade for Mad Kings to make. Who cares about the Disruptor? They got themselves a DK. And also kind of wrecked the gyrocopter in the process. Phantom Lancer's going for Battle Fury. Don't mind that. I mean, it, it's kind of weird. I don't feel like... I feel like Phantom Lancer, like, as a hero, should never be going Battle Fury. Because that just still doesn't make sense in my mind. But it's a good item on... It's a decent item on Phantom Lancer. Again, given the pace of the game, you can really afford to sit back and farm. I, was meant to have I feel like there's something fundamentally wrong in Dota if Phantom Lancer is getting Battle Fury. 
Like, Ice Frog messed up at some point if that happens. I, I might be one of the few people that actually think like that, though. The Radiant side, by the way, are falling behind. This lasting advantage for Mad Kings is, is really starting to pick up. Pita's been kind of just crushed in this mid lane. I didn't expect this deficit to be this high, but 600 deficit 12 minutes in is quite substantial. Phantom Lancer's obviously doing incredible right now, but they essentially have no power out of this gy gyrocopter early on because Rocket Barrage means that he's kind of limited to going into like 3v1 engagements or xv1 engagements into a full firefight with gyrocopter having only rocket barrage points like he's not that strong dk he's doing what he can but uh this blink dagger on the shaker this big timing item for infamous seems like it may be uh just a little bit too late for what they actually need it to be radiant's middle tower is under attack Especially when the hurt is going to be applied to them. Although top lane is still being pushed. The Coddle is in the trees. Is going to start throwing out those Illuminates. Mogur once again is back. Sladen's going to push forward. Does land the Blinding Light on the DK. But the Dragon Tail is going to stop Mogur from comboing. And Katara with the Bane coming in from the side. Kills off Sladen. And they also kill off the Disruptor elsewhere. Now Mogur is stuck between a rock and a hard place. No pun intended for Tiny. But is just going to walk out of there. As they aren't going to fully commit. Another Dragon Tail, another Breathe Fire, both up, but not enough mana for for both of them. Not going to be a huge exchange for Infamous, but picking off two supports while keeping their cores alive and farming. Can't say no to that, especially when Schofield looks like he wasn't involved in either of those kills. So he was farming this bottom lane the entire time. Again, it's not going to immediately swing the game, but uh, it, it's something. It's a little bit of something. Here's a little bit of something as well. Benya's getting tossed in for the open wounds onto Pepita. If you had drums, maybe he survives that. Fissure, not going to wall off Benjaz. Doesn't do anything, or anything versus the Lifestealer there. And Pita once again going to get jacked up hard. And the Radiance will be the build here for the Lifestealer. Once again, push is on. Tiny with the toss. Blink Dagger pretty much locked up for him. Especially since this tower is looking pretty dead. He's going to be looking to up his kill power. And, I mean, you have heroes that are quote-unquote tanky like DK... Uh, yeah, even they will just absolutely fold versus an avalanche toss combo. Push is going to be defended, actually, by Infamous. I thought they would just let this one go and try to split push the other lanes. I mean, still Schofield is a little bit off of his Blink Dagger. So, you don't really want to get into a fight. But they are able to kind of pseudo-bluff that defense by teleporting the Gyrocopter in very confidently. Push back Mad Kings and maybe Schofield can keep farming. Oh, they'll find a random Disruptor. Fortunately, they do miss their enchanted totem, but with the nightmare and the right clicks, I think they just got him. Bam! Right in the face. Well, now he has his blink dagger. Nothing like blink dagger gold delivery. Just straight in. Just, oh, you're, you're a little bit short of your blink dagger? Here you go. We're going to feed you a disruptor. What a good guy, that KZE. What a good guy. So now we have a little bit of uh, a little bit of power coming out of the Shaker, and that power is going to be put straight into the face of that OD. He does have a four staff, but he's perfectly chain stunned. Fissure into right clicks. There was a missile set up as soon as that Fissure landed, and of course the Dragon Tail on top of that will get them a tower kill before Sladen can blind them. And now for Infamous, now is the point in the game where they can start making some moves. Unfortunately for them, the move is going to be made onto them first, as the DK is going to get bowled over by the horses. Nightmare attempt save from Excel, but a little bit off. And Mogur's going to keep pushing forward right now. Has another toss. Is just beating the hell out of that Bane. Going to get tossed up and should be dropping here. Once again, the horse is coming in for the kill. Taro does a lot of damage here with this Battle Fury. Plus 55 is no joke. But he has to be able to stay on top of a Keeper of the Light. With the Force Staff and the Blinding Light, seems like that's just an impossibility. So the PL just has to keep back and farm. Gyrocopter needs to keep back and just get more points than Flag Cannon. Absolutely needs to get that maxed out ASAP. Get his own farm going. Because I mean, he's been able to actually overtake Leo style. A little bit surprising there. Uh, that kill is certainly helping him out a lot there. But uh, still is not quite where a Gyrocopter would really want to be. And Keeper uh, Phantom Lancer, as powerful as he is, as farmed as he is, still has... One too many answers on the Mad King side of things. Illuminate, Blinding Light, Tiny, like, uh, Static Storm. These tools that Mad Kings have, though not perfect up against PL, are going to mean that PL needs a lot more than this advantage if he's going to solo carry this game. Radiant 
while scanning. Hey, of course you have the Battle Fury, though. So if you're looking for more gold, that is the item for PL. Mm, Benjaz gripped up. Fissure will blink forward for a little bit of extra damage from the Enchanted Totem. They get the Imprison off, however. Dragon Tail is still available. Mogur's going to come in. Avalanche Toss annihilates Schofield. And now Stinger is going to go invis. There's a Sentry in the pocket of the Disruptor, and they'll be able to find him and kill him off. Got him. Swims back in the meantime. Excel is going to dodge the horses, but he is at no mana. He has no backup, and there's a Tiny on his ass right now, so he is super dead as well. Three kills for Mad Kings. Katara once again pushing in the top lane in the meantime, but is going to get jumped on here by the OD. A couple of illusions are going to be cleaned out in the process. Avalanche toss. Okay, just none of it, I guess. Katara trying to just juke his way out of this, but oh, the Eclipse says no. Nice jukes, buddy. I'm just going to annihilate you with Sandy's Eclipse. Thank you. FedEx. That is a lot of intelligence stolen, actually. That is a decent amount. So that's four kills for Mad Kings in as many minutes. Closing the gap just a little bit. Again, I don't mind that decision from Infamous to go for that Lifestealer kill. I do mind Schofield dying again here. That kind of sucks for him. Uh, I don't mind them going for that Lifestealer kill. You find a Lifestealer like that with the opportunity to grip him with some Ancients still attacking him, and you have three heroes there, like, you're going to take that, but... Not enough damage to kill off that life stealer. It's got Radiance now, and of course Radiance being an aura does work in Ancients. Because again, Ice Frog deems it so. Oh, someone got a little bit too close. It's Excel. That Avalanche. What happened there? I don't know what happened to the toss. He just didn't cast it. Shouldn't matter. They'll still get the kill, but eh, that was a little bit weird. And at this point, Infamous seems like they're kind of lacking some direction right now. Like Mad Kings are just rotating around the map, feasting on them, taking the objectives, looking for Pita, can't quite find him. Can they kill off this Granite Golem? Oh, he's trying! Can they kill off the Life Stealer afterwards? I don't think so, man. <laughs> Look, the, the Phantom Lands are at like half HP, just trying to kill off that Golem, just because of Radiance. That's it, man. That's That's all. This gyrocopter definitely needs an extra item. Really, any extra item. Shadow Blade needs to be picked up. Looks like it is actually done. Yeah, that's done. So the DK is going to have a little bit of uh, initiation action himself. Again, I might need to start uh, picking off some of these supports. Easy E is going to get brain sapped out. Skullfield's Blink Dagger is cancelled at the moment. Not willing to fight into a shrine. I don't know. Oh, they actually took off the Nightmare to get the Glimpse back. But it's only onto a Bane. They do try to focus down that Disruptor, but he gets imprisoned and saved. That toss was once again off the mark, but Stinger is pretty screwed here. Life Stealer gonna jump into the OD, just get a little bit closer. And the Radiance. Got him with the Radiance. He is so dead. Skullfield looking to snipe KZE, but oh, walks into a sentry. Now is silenced. He can turn around for a Fissure, but I don't think that's enough damage to actually get the kill, and he is going to die as well. Infamous definitely looking like they don't know what they should be doing right now, because uh, I mean, you either go in and fight or just back up and retreat. Now Pepita's going to get jacked. What the hell happened there? Uh, he got like Toss and then Blinding Light pushback, and he's going to try to TP out, but the Avalanche is going to cancel that. He should still be fine. Mogur Force Staff the wrong way by Slap. What is going on in this game? What the hell is happening? Alright, so yeah, it looks like Blinding Light and Toss are broken abilities, turns out. Ultimately, the gank attempt fails and the Gyrocopter will survive. Get his S and Y together, probably? Maybe just the Yasha? I mean, killing off the Gyrocopter obviously is great for Mad Kings, but not killing him off, like, it really doesn't matter all that much. They're still working with a nice little lead right now. Keeping the gyrocopter down means that if you're able to snipe the PL, or if PL's wasting his time chasing after a Radiance Lifestealer, man, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. He will not be able to solo carry. Especially if Tiny is going to go for uh, the Echo Saber that we saw Tiny go for last game. I don't care who you are. Take a double hit from a Tiny like this, and you are going to be feeling it in the morning. Lifestealer is going to go for the uh, the Nouveau Lifestealer build, Radiant Solar Crest. Even OD. Not having a great time, 
Leo style OD has been uh, fortunately on the receiving end of a lot of a lot of attention from Infamous over this series. But you know what? 8,200 gold. Yeah, behind his friendly Keeper of the Light, which really sucks. Speaking of Keeper of the Light, he's going to be here to try to help out the Life Stealer. Not quite in time, though. Does have the Aghanim Scepter, however. So once daytime breaks again, the timing pushes for Mad Kings will be really, really difficult for Infamous to deal with. So they got to get as much as they can before that happens. Not to mention the fact that Gem is already in the Quick Buy for the Keeper. Get that Gem, Aghanim Scepter vision up. Uh, there is only one source of invisibility, but the DK won't be able to use that Shadow Blade very effectively. That's for damn sure. So this is this is the timing, man. This is the coddle timing. Once you get that Ags, you become a entirely different hero. I mean, Blinding Light is also again incredible up against PL. So just being able to cast that whenever the hell you want, that's very powerful. Smoke is gonna be broken here as Kataro. He is aware of the OD, but he may not be aware of everyone else who's south of the OD. Excel soon will be, however. Glimpse back, and you are dead, sir. Tiny got him with the toss, got him with the tree branch. They have found someone inside him. Blinding light coming in a little bit too late there. Was that Echo Slam used? Well, Echo Slam's on cooldown, but wasn't used there. One for one so far. Can they make a clean retreat? Taro should be out. Schofield... He should be out as well. Man, 1k lead back. Mad Kings are just not farming as effectively as Infamous. That's not super surprising, I guess. Like, you're, you're looking at a Phantom Lancer with Battle Fury and a Gyrocopter. Life's through with Radiance and Tiny Farm pretty rapidly as well, especially with this Echo Saber now picked up. But, uh, yeah, Infamous just are farming a little bit faster. It's these kills that are keeping Mad Kings, just at this point, at parity in this game. Honestly, a little bit surprised that this farm discrepancy, like, just in creep farm, is is so vast. Like, this kill advantage is substantial for Mad Kings, but it seems like it just doesn't matter in this particular game. Infamous are keeping up right now. Mo and again, it's mostly going towards that Phantom Lancer. Not a lot of kills. 2-1-2, two, two, it's perfectly fine. And every single kill they get, it's been Excel. Seven deaths now. Obviously not every kill on the Bane, but... You know what? That's fine, because every kill on the Bane means that Benjaz is in a little bit of trouble here. He is going to get caught in the call down. Chain stun as well. No rage available. Static Storm goes up, does catch the DK, and then we'll glimpse back the Shaker. But Pepita being in the area is going to give them some much needed cover as Sladen is going to yank in Leo style. Looking for Schofield. A couple of Lancers and Illusions getting in the way. They will just drop the Eclipse and get the kill. But it's only an Earth Shaker, and now the OD's in a really precarious position because he's hit with the Dragon Tail immediately. The Blinding Light gonna give him a lot of cover, but with the BKB is still able to hit all of his shots. He's just not doing enough damage, though, instead focusing onto Mogur the Tiny, and they will be able to take him down instead. Heal's going out into Leo style, but not quite enough. Now he's way too far away from the Coddle to actually get any useful help from him. He's gonna get torn to shreds by the Smurfs. Double kill for Pepita, and Mad Kings lose four. Suddenly the advantage they had is all gone. As day breaks, the Coddle gets into a fight that he really doesn't want to be in. A fight where he is down here and his allies are fighting on two separate fronts. So you can illuminate this way, you can illuminate this way, but you're not going to be able to illuminate everyone. Whereas normally in siege scenarios, like you illuminate down the lane, you heal all of your allies. So, I mean, he did what he can, but that is not the ideal scenario to be in as a Keeper of the Light with Aghanim Scepter. You want to avoid those situations like the Plague and Pepita getting that BKB over the SNY, that definitely swung that fight in Infamous's favor. Yeah, Being able to just land your hits as Gyrocopter is so important. As, as any hero, let's be honest. But uh, yeah, getting it up against that Blinding Light, an absolute necessity. Also, the fact that Mad Kings kind of trickled in was uh, suspect, to say the least. PL? Oh, Courier! Run away, Courier! Oh, can't run away from the Coddle. He will find you. He will kill you. Night Stalker, where are you at? Now looking for some vision here. Excel gonna once again hide. He's spotted though. Nightmare the OD. Still has a glimpse, but the glimpse isn't really gonna take him that far. Are they gonna bother saving Excel right now? They're running out of vision. Oh, no, they have more vision from the Coddle. Short glimpse, that's not gonna do much. But it will get the kill because it's a Bane and Banes die very easily. They'll also catch Shaker with the Mana League stun. But while they're chasing all these supports, bottom and top are both being pushed. 
Shaker. Oh, he had Blink Dagger for a split second there. He's going to go down. But the backdoor protection is active in this lane, so they can't really do anything here. Looking at mid, down to half HP. Looking at top, it's dead. So, yeah, you get two kills, but, man, it costs you a hell of a lot there. Gem on the Keeper of the Light still. Not quite in range of that DK. There's a sentry on the deck for the Dire as well. Stinger, though, is just dancing in between all these sources of True Sight. And he is pinged out, so this is very obvious. Can he escape? Uh, doesn't look like it. Uh, I'm not really feeling it right now, Stinger. You may be in a little bit of trouble. Take down the DK as well. Night Kings are able to catch a couple of these stragglers. It's like, uh, yeah, Shaker died in the top lane. DK died in mid. Straight into the Roche pit with that Solar Crest. I'm not really sure if that's an effective way of clearing out Roche. But uh, with this infinite heal from the uh, Keeper of the Light, it's no longer there. Never mind. It's going to cost them a little bit of health. But hey, you know what? They found Excel again. What is that? Nine deaths? Two, nine, and four, baby. That is how you play Bane. You take one for the team. You buy some space. You create some time for your Phantom Lancer to go ham. And Roshan is no longer a viable option for the Mad King side because their top lane is kind of getting wrecked. Goldfield is still chilling, still ready to go in if necessary. But man, this tower took an absolute thrashing from this PL. He has a fresh butterfly. All that agility that it gives, that, that funnels straight into those illusions. Level 22 at this stage. Be able to get that level 25. Like, Phantom Lancer is an absolutely nasty hero once he has that. Look at this farm discrepancy now. He's 6k ahead of that life stealer. And he might be getting to a point where he might just be able to solo carry the game. Uh, it feels like he might need level 25 to actually do that uh, effectively. But goddamn, PL is doing some heavy lifting. And even the Gyrocopter has picked up the slack a lot as well. 6-3-2 Pepita. Had a really, really rough early game. But now staring the, down the barrel of his own Butterfly. Has BKB at 9 seconds as well. These cores for Infamous, they are getting a lot. And yeah, maybe DK is not all that in a, in a great spot, Kataro, the Leo style, gets pushed back a little bit, blinding light, and a really cripple here. There is no heals coming from the Coddle, and OD cannot stand his ground, despite doing additional damage versus the Illusions. He does get glimmered out, oh, KZE, he's gonna land the Static Storm, and that should be able to kill off the PL at the end of the day. And at the same time, the Imprison does save the Disruptor, so Static Storm, proving to be that hard counter, but Schofield jumps in, snipes him, and then jumps out. I mean, it's only a kill on the disruptor, so who really cares, but uh, that was pretty slick. Yeah, DK, Earthshaker, Bane, they're not all that wealthy, but honestly, they don't really need to be. Uh, DK would obviously love more farm, but getting a BKB, if he's able to get really anything, get a, get a Silver Edge upgrade, get some auras or something, and he could just be a, a Dragon Tail machine. There you go, get the auras. Good uh, break off feasts. I don't know how good that is. It's not terrible, obviously. It's just straight benefits, but I'm not really sure if that's worth it. This is just the supporting crew. Gyrocopter PL. They're going to be winning the game for Infamous if anyone is to win the game. Is this actually worth it? I feel like that in prison doesn't actually help them kill Roche at all. It actually kind of hurts them because they're just like standing around while Roche is not dying. We'll just check out the Illuminates once again. It is not daylight, so there are no heals here, at least not from the Coddle. Navita moving in, does have that butterfly in the BKB call down, now out, he's gonna BKB, get right into the middle of everyone, Stinger's gonna come in, and the Fissure, it's gonna be cancelled, the Urshaker can't do anything, he's gonna Echo Slam nobody, they have, however, been able to isolate and kill off Sladen, it's gonna cost them two BKB charges, but they actually have caught the Tiny as well, in the middle of No Man's Land, Mogra's gonna get buzzed down, Stinger grabs a double kill, now Benjez is gonna get out of there, that was really, really sketchy for him. But ultimately, Infamous, they swoop right in, grab the Roshan, and that wasn't even with PL, like, really being in that fight. That was all DK, Gyrocopter, and, uh, and that Earthshaker. Now that the Smurf does have that double life, man, this game got a lot harder for Mad Kings. All of a sudden, their lead, it's gone, man, and the lead is fully in favor of Infamous. PL is ready to shred some fools, and Gyrocopter didn't do a terrible job there, either. Uh, it did seem like Mad Kings were trying to make that play a, in a little bit of a rushed manner. You take that fight when it's daytime, you obviously get the heals, but more importantly, you get that full unobstructed vision. And you can actually see when the enemies are coming in and actually do something about them. But going in nighttime when you, they're completely blind, 
that's gonna cost them a set of racks here benjez is gonna poke in does have a maelstrom he's ready to go but he is pushing really really far ahead of his allies right now stinger's gonna pop that bkb just turn around get to work on the od blind like and get schofield into a better position but he does have the hurricane pike out and he will imprison himself so the od is not dead just yet but kotaro still at full hp and still with the phantom rush if it'll lance down kotaro with the fissure they'll get the kill the heals may be there as benjez is gonna pop right out get to work onto kelsa priest excel and maybe able to catch Schofield here as well. Does does blink out though before any damage can be applied to him. Still gonna go down in the end. They've already taken what they wanted though. So losing a Bane, 10 deaths. Who cares, man? Who cares? They got the racks. They're able to escape with all the heroes that really matter. And they even take an OD for the road, which isn't bad. MKB next item here on the PL. Gotta get some accuracy up against the Radiance the solar crest and of course that blinding light being the uh, the chief culprit with the bkb he doesn't actually have to worry about really any of that so maybe he'll decide against yeah he's gonna decide against go for a nullifier instead definitely a uh i think this is definitely the right call the ac coming up on stinger still is behind in farm but man you can see this dk just being a walking dragon tail machine sometimes that's all you need Pushing level 20 as well. I'm not really sure if this pace of the game is is really uh, conducive to 150 gold per minute. Like, how much can he actually get out of that? We'll see what he's able to pick up at level 25. Speaking of uh, level 20, 25 on Phantom Lancer is not too far away. OD, well, not really there just yet. And tiny tree grab cooldown is, is pretty good. What does Lifestealer have? He's level 20 as well. I, if I recall correctly, Lifestealer's cool, uh, talents are all very mediocre. And nothing game breaking there. Sorry, Life Stealer. But you know what? He does have a Radiance. He does now have a Mjolnir in production. His farm, pretty far behind that PL, honestly. But uh, you can't farm any faster than this build on Life Stealer. I don't think. I don't think that's possible. You will be able to stay competitive if this game does, in fact, drag on. But it looks like Infamous may not be looking for that. Oh, they found an Arcane Rune. Radiant Feels pretty good, man. You wanna you wanna attack. double up on that dragon form? Not double, double up, but uh, it, it certainly helps. Downtime is minimized. Bottom lane still pushing, and this is a daylight push full minute here. But uh, not really sure if this is something they can really uh, really fully commit to because mid lane is pushing at the same time. And I'm, I mean, Mad King still push pretty rapidly, but this is a Phantom Lancer and a really stacked Jaro we're talking here. Not exactly pushing heroes, but man, they're just stacked. It doesn't matter if they're pushing heroes or not. It's like they're looking to intercept someone on the retreat. It would be Mogur if anyone, but I don't think they're going to be able to find him. There's an Eye of Scotty on Pita. Yeah, that'll get the job done. It's only at 2700 HP. He's pushing a level 25 mark as well. Get those extra missiles, which I have not seen be really uh, impressive. Oh, Stinger, is he going to go straight in towards the Coddle after being blinded? I'm not sure about that one, bro. But he will just escape with the Shadow Blade, so in the end, not punished, so it doesn't matter. Bottom lane is being pushed. Kataro. Nullifier is up and flying out to him. Nullify. What can he actually nullify here? That's really good. Eh. Hmm. It's okay. Mm, that's that's actually pretty good. Get rid of that Hurricane Pike. It does... Dyer's Courier died. And it does also Purge. I'm not really sure if that does anything in this game. It doesn't look like it does. Gets rid of uh, gets rid of Mjolnir. It does get rid of the Static Charge from Mjolnir. Big uses of the Nullifier in this game. But Nullifier is great and everything. Level 25 on the PL. That's just a little bit better. And he is pretty much there. So yeah, nothing like picking up some random crit, because that makes sense. Here, PL, have some crit. Stinger once again on the hunt. It is darkness right now. Gem on the keeper, not going to do him any favors here. They are going to get the grip. Stinger with the BKB up is going to snipe the keeper of the light. Now Gem is on the floor. Mogur Benjez, though, still very firmly in the air. Pizza is going to chase down Leo style and just force him to the high ground. Isolate Benjez, therefore, so that Stinger and Pizza can just handle him and kite him as much as they can possibly allow with that Eye of Scotty. They're going to lose Excel, but again, who cares? Because in the main fight, it's the Phantom Lancer going to go in. Although he can't quite catch up to that OD, he will isolate Sladen, who has bought back. 
can't quite get on him though. He's going to miss that lance. They do stack him up, but oh, the glimpse back onto the PL actually will get him killed off. And now the OD imprisons himself, so he's going to stay alive versus that call down. Schofield looking for an echo slam will land onto the OD, will get the kill in fact, but is going to cost him that DK as the Leisler does chase him down, gets the kill. Bot lane in full breach will be cleaned up in time. And that fight, really, really messy for Infamous. Seems like they uh, should have tried to keep the fight out here. Once they push the OD out, isolate the life stealer, you kill him off, and you're looking at a really good fight. But uh, having the Phantom Lancer come in and kind of force the fight from here to here really, really is costly. Like, you're going up high ground, you're going into tower range, so you can't really... Uh, you're going up high ground, so you're getting that mischance, you're working with less vision in general. That movement of the fight from the low ground to the high ground really, really cost an infamous there. Oh, Moger wants to pick a fight with Pita. Looks like that won't be much of a fight. He'll just get the kill immediately. Gets yanked out towards bottom? Towards bottom-ish. Chasing after Excel. He's picked up a hand of Midas. This Bane has lofty aspirations. But he's being chased down here. It looks like he'll get up into his base, puts the tiny to sleep, and then is able to retreat. But he's the only one alive right now, and everyone and their mom's getting yanked in. OD's up in just a handful of seconds. Daylight, still a minute 30. These timings really screwing over Mad Kings. Never daylight when they want it to be. But Stinger's back. Schofield's back. Where did the gem actually end up? Where's What's the button? Where the hell is the gem? Am I blind? Oh, there's the gem. Okay, the gem's in the dire base. No one has it, though, which is interesting. 12k lead here for Infamous. Still no structural damage, but Kataro, he is really, really far out here. Again, luckily for him, there is no Aghanim Scepter Vision on the Coddle, so it doesn't really matter, although he is going to isolate himself. Oh, Phantom Lancer. He's going to need to pop the BKB here if he wants to escape this. He's going to BKB Doppelgang and just turn around, nullify the OD, get on top of him with that almost perma slow, but the Glimmer Cape is out, and Katara doesn't have any true sight for that. He's just going to have to run down the lane. They will maybe see the Disruptor, and they will in fact see him, and then just absolutely annihilate him. Everyone else going to retreat, but that's BKB on the Phantom Lancer down. For just a Disruptor kill, if they can push in and do something in this minute, then it'll be worth it. But I don't believe they can. So, it doesn't really seem like it's going to be a, a trade that Infamous are happy with. Roshan's not spawning for another minute. Perfectly timed for the Disruptor. Illusion. Really awkward place for a PL to be in. But you can see how scared the Mad King side are of this Disruptor. Of this uh, Phantom Lancer, rather. Like, if he gets on top of you, he will absolutely mess you up. Static Storm doesn't work anymore until it's agged. But Disruptor doesn't farm for shit. So, he's not going to be able to get that in a very long time here. PL is the final boss, and Jowercopter is the secondary boss. Like, dude is stacked as well. Get those homing missiles. Level 25, still not up on any of these dire heroes yet. What is DK? 20, did pick up the gold. Still is working towards that AC. I think he picked up a blink dagger. He got plate mail blink. Is that right? The map is closing in on Mad Kings. They are behind by a significant gold margin, but uh, I don't really think that truly matters. Get the OD in the back. If you can keep him clean of pressure, Mad Kings can definitely take these engagements. They just need to find some initiation on their own terms, such as an Earthshaker in the middle of nowhere. He will yules up that vision, but now stuck in the Static Storm. Oh, he's going to blink out before the damage can tick in. Doesn't seem like it's a mechanic that should work, but that is in fact how it works. Dude, these Phantom Lancer illusions. Jeez. They just absolutely crushed that tiny. Uh, they're just waiting for Roche right now, which is up, by the way. That's Roche 2, so they get Cheese, Gyro, PL, DK, all great Cheese carriers. Uh, DK is not a great Aegis carrier. Everyone else kind of is, though, so. It's time for Mad Kings to. Start to look for that pick off. Infamous should be looking for that pick as well. The thing is, if Infamous get a pick off, then it might just be a, a GG push or a buyback forced out. Either of which are really, really good for them. If Mad Kings get a pick off, they get Roche. And they probably don't get more than that. Life Stealer, level 25, right around the corner. 
get that insane plus two second nice. rage duration. I mean, I, I, I said that pretty sarcastically. It's actually really good. Like, six seconds to eight seconds, the cooldown stays the same, so you just get more uptime. Like, it is really, really powerful. It's just not quite as impressive as, say, 30% chance to crit, which is kind of broken. Sladen does see an isolated PL, does leak him, but the blinding light misses. Dodge by the doppelganger, and now Katara's gonna try to bait them out as they do jump in. Dragon Tail Stinger, his target is gonna get banished, and they'll find the tiny instead. Moger is in the wrong neighborhood, and he'll get picked off immediately. No tiny for this fight. Now Benjes is also kind of isolated here. He's gonna try to chase after this DK, but he has so much armor, I don't think he can actually kill him off in any reasonable fashion. Off to the north of this fight, Sladen is gonna get chased down by the missiles. He'll be sh for sure picked off, and Benjes will too. They will isolate Schofield, kill off the Shaker, but they gotta get themselves the hell out of here. Disruptor is gonna glimmer himself, Breathe Fire still lands, and he's gonna get spotted by the Courier, I think. Yeah, he's spotted by the Courier. Picked off, and no one from Mad Kings has buyback. Infamous lose one in the Shaker. But the initiation for the up team's time, it's the DK to jump in with the Dragon Tail. No such initiation from the Mad King squad. And then the fight so separated is so great for heroes like Phantom Lancer. Not really great for the Gyrocopter, but at this point he has 25k net worth. He can get into any fight and still be pretty darn good. That's Aegis, that's Cheese. This, for Infamous, should be the attempt at forcing out buybacks. Which obviously is going to fail because no one has buybacks. So I think they might just... I mean, Lifesaver just gets his. I think they could just walk in and clean up mid and bottom and just get megas. They don't know that none of these buybacks are up. I don't, I don't think they should know at least. That's not the button. Yeah, Tiny's just gold. He's not like, with a gold shortage, so... Uh, they're probably at this point realizing, hey, wait. These guys don't have buybacks. Let's just get megas real quick. Oh, Leo Style. Bro, what? He's just... He's out, man. Leo Style's out, man. He's just, he's just gone. He's just gone. <laughs> right. Well, that's a, that's a way you can call GG. So it's, it's a little bit unorthodox, but uh, it gets the job done. Guys, Infamous are going to take this series 2-0 over Mad Kings. And, uh, well, just the passive farming of Infamous to a slightly higher level than that of Mad Kings. Uh, Leo style definitely is a hero that thrives on non OD heroes. It seems like that style for him is a little bit too slow. I don't quite recall all the bands, but I do remember like Queen of Pain being banned, Viper being banned. I mean, yeah, it seems like this is just not really looking like Mad Kings in their comfort zone. Pick up a really good timing on the Ags Keeper of the Light, and then just never have anything to do with it. Like every single time they could have done something with it. It was darkness, so you can't do anything with this. You gotta wait again. Then they lose when it's daytime. It's just a, a whole big thing. Infamous are going to stay alive here in GESC. And are going to move forward to face? Well, we don't know yet. That's going to be revealed in about an hour, guys. Unless we push the schedule up, I'll try to figure that out. Uh, we got SG going up against T-Show. Again, should be in about an hour and ten minutes. If we stay on schedule, it might change, it might not. I'll let you guys know ASAP. Uh, the loser of that will face Infamous. The winner of that goes into the finals, which will be played tomorrow. And that's actually oh, that's a best of five. Ooh, fancy, fancy. All right, guys. I'm Mike Laura. It's been a pleasure casting these games for you guys. And I will be back for SG Sports versus T-Show. Again, going to be happening in about an hour. See you guys then. GG.